Today I'm here with Coach Greg Adams. Coach, how you doing? All's well, man. I appreciate you having me on your channel. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. you coming on tonight. Yep. Um, first question I want to ask you is your bio and the backstory. We know people call you Coach Greg Adams, yep. but I know that the coach word did not come from coaching men. So give us a backstory. Yeah. So my background is uh, the name has been around for a long time. Even before I started making content on YouTube, I was a college basketball coach. So I started off around the age of 19. I finished up my last season at junior college and I always talk about the community college on my show, the benefits of the junior college. All right. And had many fun times there. But uh, what, what happened uh, was I got I knew I wasn't going to play at the next level. And I wanted to extend my basketball career. And I started coaching at my high school, girls basketball. So started off coaching there, eventually got into college basketball, where I was there for almost 16 seasons, if I'm not mistaken. And I traveled with women 24-7. I mean, that's where I get a lot of my insight on female nature, just understanding women. As a coach, you got to understand women, right, um, in order to coach them and be effective. And, you know, I started coaching women and recruiting uh, across the country. And that's how I got the name. Uh, it, stuck, it stuck with me. And once I started making content on YouTube, it was initially basketball videos. And now when I changed into the YouTube uh, making Manosphere type uh, content, I didn't know what to change the name to. I was kind of like, what do I call myself? It's always been Coach Greg Adams. And I decided to leave it, even though I knew people wouldn't naturally agree with it. They were like, oh, who is this coach guy? Right. So I decided to leave the channel as it was. And luckily I did because I never had to change anything. Okay, awesome. Now you have grown in the past year. I mean, your growth has been incredible. What is the reason why your channel has grown so much? What? Why do you think your channel? Has well, grown? I think, yeah, sometimes I'm amazed at the, uh, the connection, right? I'll see myself, I'll do an interview on another page and, and it'll get views and I'm, you know, to me, I'm still astounded. I'm not the type of person where I'm like, yeah, I'm the best one here and I got the best information. I I'm not that guy. I I'm looking at it going, I'm astounded that people are still, uh, you know, uh, finding the content and finding it valuable. For me, I had a great run at the beginning. The first eight months is where I had my biggest pickup of like 75,000 subscribers right off the bat. But then I, I came at a time where there was a lot of demonetization, a lot of uh, stuff going on. And overnight, my channel got demonetized and the growth started to slow down uh, for about a year. So it was really slow to get to the 100,000 subscriber mark. But after that, it's still growing. So I think what's happening now, to be honest with you, what's happening now is that the message I've been able to make the message more digestible. Right before my earlier videos were a little bit hardcore MGTOW, kind of the talking points that every beginning MGTOW guy talks about. Right. Well, then I found a way to make it entertaining. Right. Making sound effects. All right. And make it a little more uh, entertaining and, com and comedic while still giving the talking points. Right. So I think the entertainment, the quality, you know, changing the camera, adding lights, I think it offers a little bit more. Uh, for people, even if they disagree, they can come in and get a good laugh. Mm -hmm. Now, the the word MGTOW, okay, mm -hmm. or the acronym MGTOW, if anybody doesn't know, that's not, that stands for men going their own way. Yeah. Would you consider yourself in the MGTOW area? I would, because that's a lot of the people that initially latched on to me were from that. And that was mo most of the content that I that I made at, at initially was geared toward that. I wouldn't even put that in the title. Uh, but I think the reason why it people will still associate that uh, with me with that is because that's the group that I latched on to when I came out of my divorce and came out of some busted up relationships. So when I initially made the content, it was targeted towards that. But I think what happened is honestly, there's not 140, 200,000 MGTOWs. There's just not. So the people who are watching my content now, they're not hardcore monk MGTOW guys. There's guys that are learning about life. And so I had to change the message just slightly for it, for it to be not that hardcore 
uh, coming in from that MGTOW, I had to change the message to guide men. So now it's free agent lifestyle. And now a lot of guys can, uh, they can initially go, yeah, free agent lifestyle. I want that. Mm -hmm. As opposed to if I say, well, just go on your own way. Well, a lot of guys would be like, well, you know, you know, yeah. it's just not clear. They would I, have all kinds of questions after that. I think that term is, is um, associated with a real negative kind of connotation, that term. I mean, right. I, when I first came across MGTOW, I think it was that turd monkey guy, you know, oh, and yeah, yeah. Like the guy who lives with a doll. So people right. tend to get the wrong idea. I mean, right. you know, the more I've looked at it, I would consider myself in the MGTOW community because <clears throat> I date women, but I'm not interested in a relationship at this point. Yep. So I think that's kind of all in the same spectrum. Well, now, what happens you, with the MGTOW guys, a lot of people, the questions are, well, do, do I not date anymore? Do I not have sex with women anymore? Yeah. Do I get it? And so when that becomes unclear, you got to kind of guide them a little bit and say, no, you can still do these things. And then within that, I said, well, I'll just change the name of it, not of the MGTOW. I still respect all of those people. And, you know, I'm considered a part of that 100 mm percent. -hmm. But I still got to give message to men because not all men are willing to take that leap. So you got to give them something to digest. Well, you also you also kind of set yourself a little apart from that because you came up and I believe you came up with this, which is free agent lifestyle. Yep. So, so tell me about that. What do you what do you say is a free agent lifestyle? So free agent lifestyle has, you know, elements of going your own way. I mean, it's kind of like you look, you do things on your own. You build your life up first. Um, if you're struggling with dating and you're having problems, which guys are typically complaining about or making issues about the dating landscape, uh, women and their attention. Well, if you're having problems with that, the best thing to do is build your life and live free first. Right. Once you learn how to do that, then you can come back to whatever table you want to come to. But if men avoid that step, they avoid going your own way. They avoid living freely first and they jump right from their mama's house, right into a relationship where they're cohabitating. In this day and age, that's a recipe for disaster, right? That man is ill prepared for life and he's going to mess his life up uh, most likely based on the statistics. Now, I'm going to. Another question is, and I'm sure you have gotten this, and I think a lot of single guys will get this, the single guys that are living the free agent lifestyle. Why aren't you in a relationship? Is there something wrong with you? I mean, yeah, we, yeah. That, it, that question comes up because of just the conditioning. Everybody assumes your, you know, your next step into adulthood is going to be a relationship, right? Um, the minute you have a couple relationships and you say, well, I'll, I'll just be by myself, automatically they want to push you back into why you should be in a relationship. Well, you just met the wrong one or you need to keep trying the right ones out there. Not all women are like that. Well, over time as a man, you learn, well, I can keep chopping away at this until I find the right one after 80 years or I can experience life. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is this, when I chose to experience life, yeah, 90% of women said, I don't want no parts of that guy. But a good 10% of women said, that's interesting. All right. And you can come back and get those 10%. I think what guys do is we want validation from every woman. All right. We want every woman to look at us. We want every woman to think that we're handsome and, and smart and got a big dick. All right. We want every woman to believe that. Now, in the real world, you're not going to get that much attention. All right. Not in today's world. So. In reality, instead of focus on 100 percent of women, just focus on a few that focus their attention on you. Then you might be able to have a big, big, better deal with it. But relationship wise, it's not the time. 2020, 2021. This is the time to live for as free as possible. Now, when it comes to dating, OK, a lot of guys, I think. Blame blame women for the issues they have rather than owning up yes to what they allowed in their life yes you know it's right now when we see I, I, people watch my content and think i'm blaming women right but i'm just basically telling you who women are because a lot of guys aren't ready to deal with who women really are and a lot of times women show us exactly who they are 
They don't have a problem doing it. It's just us not willing to accept who they are. And then by virtue of not accepting, we allow them to do things and we give them all this rope in the relationship. And then they do exactly what women are going to do. Now, here's what happens. We blame them for not being the man in the relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I told men on my channel going into 2021 and 2022, we're no longer going to blame women. And it shouldn't sound like that. We're going to start blaming men because it's too much information out here related to female nature. There's too many guys like you and all these guys putting out all this content. And there's still guys that are going to roll the dice, believing that, uh, you know, women are queens and, you know, pedestalizing them and worship it. If you're going to do this going forward, I'm not going to feel sorry for you because you are not listening. I mean, we're here giving you this information and you're instead of listening to us, you're believing women. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a recipe for disaster. So we got to own up to all, a lot of our mistakes. No, I'm sure, I'm sure like, like me and you, I'm sure you have those friends in your life that always have to have a girlfriend. Yes. Always. And is it true? And I, this is what I believe is that that woman doesn't make you a man that having that woman by your side doesn't make you a better man. So why does the guy always have to have, Go from one relationship to the next. Yeah, I have a friend just like that. You know, he calls, you know, he sees my stuff. Oh, he's still hating women, you know, but he's in bad relationship after bad relationship after time consuming bad relationship. I mean, as long as I've known him, he's been divorced, breakup, divorce, breakup. I mean, marriage. I mean, it's just been a disaster. And I look at him and I say, why don't you take time to build your your, your life? This guy's lost his business in the last two years. I mean, he's had one cluster disaster after the next, and that's because he can't be at, be without a woman. Every time we go somewhere, hey, let's go to the Angels game. He was like, I got a ticket for you. I say, okay, I'll show up with him, and then he's got a woman there. And I'm like, bro, why are you bringing her? I thought we were chilling. Oh, well, you know, she wanted to go. And then it's just some girl he met online. It's not even a girl that, you know, they haven't got a relationship. And I go, bro, why don't you take a break? Why don't you take a break? But these type of men are conditioned that you have to have a woman in order for society to validate you. And to be honest with you, he's kind of right, because look at what they do to us. Look at what everybody does to us. We say, well, I'm going to be a free agent. I'm going to go out and do what I and we still we get shamed. So to be fair. He doesn't get shamed or he doesn't get labeled anything because he has a woman with him, but he's comfortable with that where. Or he's uncomfortable with the idea of being shamed, whereas me, I'm not. I go, well, listen, my money's stacking. I'm not losing my business, right? I'm not distracted. And life's going good. Yeah, everybody has those friends. And I mean, I'll bring up a recent friend of mine that his his actual words were, I don't like your beliefs, your beliefs and your thoughts and your views about women. Now, meanwhile... It's the same guy who moved his ex-wife in. Mm. They have no sex. She <laughs> lives in his home. The, and now this is bef before, you know, he had, he had said this to me after he had asked me, well, I need to get her out of there. And I think yeah. that's a good idea. It's also the same guy that reconnected with an ex-girlfriend. He went across the state to visit her. He moved her whole house. When they went to go to sleep at night, she said, I don't want you sleeping in my bed. And he actually slept on the floor. See, so prime examples of the, the guys that don't like our message, but they, they're in these type of relationships. And you go, wow. But they think they're better than us, right? Because they have a girlfriend, but they don't do anything with them. I don't know. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just that it's it's, it's the whole point of view. And I think what you do is is you're, you're basically having men work on yourself. Yes. I mean, to me, that's the, that's the number one thing that I do, whether it be, you know, training or, or working on my business, working on my home. Yep. And, you know, that to me is important as a man, we got to be men before yes. we can bring something else into our life. And that's for sure. Yep. So another question I'm going to ask you is, Let's talk about social media oh, and dating apps and what has it done to the dating world? 
Man, I'll tell you, it's um, it's made a complicated issue a little more complicated. Um, you know, if I just take a general stance, if I was just saying in general, uh, they're bad for everybody. Right. And I could just talk, make talking points on that. Sure. You're the the amount of attention that I could give to one lady compared to what she can get on a dating app and Instagram and social media. I can't compete. Now, could I find somebody I could? All right. If I just, you know, uh, you know, it, with some time taking some years to find the right one that is able to balance social media apps and dating apps and myself. Sure. I mean, she's out there, but is it worth my time to go find that woman? I think honestly, that is the biggest other than the laws not changing related to family courts. That's been the biggest uh, black eye to relationships moving forward. As long as there's dating apps and women believe that they got thousands of options but they yet still complain they can't find one, which is mind boggling. Women had three options and found a man. All right. Back in 40 years ago, they had three options to pick from and found a man. Women today have thousands of options. Can't find one. Can't settle on one. They're all garbage. This gives you an indication of the mind state that this available options have has given them too many options to pick from and they can't choose one. OK, and here's the deal. When you get married to one and luckily I wasn't married during the social media and dating app phase, I was married without that. So in order for me or her to have an affair, you have to have the person right there. Right. You have to actually have to know them. Well, now your wife could have WhatsApp, kick Instagram, uh, Snapchat, dating apps on the side. I, I mean, various di di uh various degrees of dating apps, she could have 10 different things loaded on her phone and have these running conversations with people in the middle of your relationship and marriage. Now, to me, that's a violation of any sort of definition of relationship. There's no way you can run a real relationship doing that. There's no way. And not in my mind. Um, in their world, yes, because their world, they need socializing. They're the, that's how they get through life, socializing. So they need this socializing. But to me, you can't have an honest commitment with that. So in, in my definition, marriages are doomed as long as those exist. Well, would you agree like on dating apps? I think it was, I believe it was Pat Stedman said when he talked about dating apps that it's the, how did he put it? I'm going to paraphrase him, but the, it's the easiest entry. Mm -hmm. To something will will bear the worst fruit, basically, is what oh, he was saying. I see. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, right. Um, well, what typically happens, I've done a stream uh related to Lilith's mirror, and I broke down uh the uh, you know the story of Lilith in the Torah in the Jewish uh folklore, basically saying that the men that are in Lilith's mirror are demons, right? And so what's happening is in that den of demons, she procreates with demons and produces more demons into the world. And I'm thinking about it and I'm going, this is what's happening. The men that are getting the at bats, which in the theory of MGTOW or whatever, it's 20% of men getting at bats with 80% of women. What's coming out of these relationships are nothing good. Very few positives come out of here. There may be one that say, well, I met my husband on a dating app, but there's so much procreation, uh, fornication, demon production, all right, single motherhood out of these things that it's more reflective of negative outcomes, all right, them choosing negative outcomes based on their lust as opposed to choosing a man for the entire picture. And the world is actually bearing fruit, right? I mean, I mean these relationships are bearing fruit of what's being produced in the world. The young children today are addicts of social media. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. So all future relationships will have the component of dating apps and or social media. And now the dynamic of what was a traditional relationship can no longer be. That's just what's happening here. Now, I'm I'm a little bit old school. I'm 58 years old. So okay. looking good, though, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, geez. so, so um, I mean, I grew up in the time to where when you wanted to meet a girl, say even like in high school. There was no cell phone. No. There was the home phone. That was the home phone, yes. 
you got her dad. That's right. Make it past her dad to even speak to her. Yes. And then you had to hope dad wasn't on the extension listening to you. Exactly. So there was a whole different dynamic in dating, meeting. There wasn't, you know, when you made a date with somebody, it was pretty much set in goal. I mean, you were you were set. Now I'm sure there's a lot more flaking, mm -hmm. a lot more, you know, just just not being realistic because their options are so much more than they are back then. So yeah. Well, you still had to even even when you picked the girl up, you had to go through dad, right? You couldn't just pick her up, wait in your car. You had to knock on the door, all right, go up to the door, meet the dad, all right. The kid, you know, came and kicked you in the shin. All right, the dog licked your leg and humped it. I mean, there was there were steps before you even got her out of the door. Now a girl will be like, Oh, I'll just meet you there. And um, she'll forget, guys. I've been on dating apps with women, checked in with them the night before. And the day of, are we still meeting? And that brought to be like, oh, I forgot I had a date. All right. You know, because literally for, for them to keep track with the amount of at bats that they're getting, I could see why one will slip through the crack. I mean, it happens to me, uh, but most of the time they're busted Pillsbury biscuit cans. All right. They ain't a lot of, you know, hot chicks after me. I'm going to have to work. I have to work hard for the hot ones. All right. Uh, a fat Pillsbury biscuit can woman can get. On a slow Tuesday, a top-notch guy to come plow right through her. I mean, this is happening. With no matter how many guys say, well, I'll never touch a fat woman. Guys, mm. fat women are getting touched by better-looking guys than you. All right, so stop the BS. There's a lot of fat women having a lot of sex. All right, and the reality is what that's doing to the dynamic is uh, back in the day, a woman couldn't flake on you because she had no way to contact you to flake on you. They used to say I got stood up, but a woman couldn't just be like on last minute. Oh, I ain't coming. I ain't coming. Right. Because she knew she had to get on the phone, get you on the horn, got get you before you left your place. So the dynamics of this and, and before I got married, there was no text messaging on phones. Like before, when I was dating to get married to my wife, you couldn't text. We didn't get together on text when we talked. I mean, when we had to communicate, we talked on the phone. Um, and coming out of that, it was a whole new dynamic. There was Instagram and dating apps. So yeah, this, this technology now affords people more choices, but again, looking at the data, just look at the data of modern relationships, more divorces, less marriage, less children being born. And we got more options. We literally got it all right here in the palm of our hand and we're failing at it. Why, why do you think men are failing at it? And well, first of all, I think the dynamic of what men are doing, they've changed as well. So we talk about a lot about what women are doing. The dynamic of men is that because women are more sexual, right? We're, we're falling for the sex first, right? So we're getting the sex, we're getting the reward. But in terms of the long-term relationship, some guys get denapped, all right? They get a little bit of sex and then they get stuck with that woman. But then that woman starts playing games on him and he doesn't know how to control her. So he's he's he, he doesn't have a masculine approach to it. So he keeps staying on the marketplace trying to uh, scratch that itch. But overall, I think there's men, more men are simps and more men are weak as opposed to being in the masculine position. And the reason why is women have the advantage. To be honest with you, women have the women have the advantage until they run out of time. Uh, let you know what? Let's let's go over a couple phrases that I've noticed you use. Yeah, one of them is simp. For somebody that doesn't know what a simp is, what's a simp? A lot of people ask that question, um, and a lot of people have a different definition. But uh, um, the the standard definition for me is someone that idolizes mediocre peace leave is what I call it on my show, which is pussy. Right? You mm -hmm. idolize a mediocre woman, okay? And that's what I think a lot of guys are doing. So a simp might pedestalize a woman, might worship a woman that doesn't need to be worshipped. Like to me, an Instagram model, she has no business being worshipped past the fact that she's attractive and she's poking her ass out on the on the Instagram, right? That, that would be the line that I would draw there. Now, when people go above and beyond that and say she, she deserves the world and people need to be doing this and I would marry you, I would drink your bath water, that's simping, all right? That Or you marry that woman. You know what she is. She's a professional 304, which is a whore. 
You don't marry that women. Be, that was going to be my next question. The, the, 304. the 304. So 304 came along with the uh, calculator. Remember in school you had a calculator and uh, you could type little uh, numbers in there and get a word. So I'm going to do it for your audience here. I typed 304 into the calculator. And then when you hold it upside down, what does it say? Yep. <laughs> H-O-E. Okay. So in order to pass by the sensor sometime, you got to come up with creative names. I didn't come up with it. It's been around for a long time. But 304, uh, there's women here uh, that, that aren't very good women, and we pedestalize them. We're in the age of women worship. And when men do that overboard, we just call them a sim. Another word that or another phrase that you use, and it took me a while, and I'm going to take a guess at this one, mm -hmm. and it's called a 49er. Now, 49er, yes. Is that, and now this is just a guess, is that like a gold digger? No, it is it's not, not like a gold digger. No, no, no. 49er is a woman that is rated a four in appearance. Like you would say, oh, she's a nine, she's a 10. It's a woman that is rated as a four in appearance, but she has the mentality and the wishes to be treated as if she's a nine. Okay. Okay. So we put those together. She believes in her mind that she's a nine because she gets att attention on dating apps, but she's really a four. Okay. Uh, she's a 49er, right? So what typically happens is, uh, you know, what happens, you meet a woman. You're thinking this woman ain't getting no attention. You might match with her on Tinder. Oh, I got this one. This will be an easy one. Well, a lot of times the fours are getting a lot of attention because guys are like, I don't have anything to lose. I'll just ask her for sex. I'll ask her out. I'll get. So she has more at bats and more men after her. And therefore, she raises her expectations by the time you show up. So she starts asking you for a relationship. She starts asking you for two or three dates. All right. She wants to be treated like the women who are rated nine and a 10 on the scale. And you're like, you're like, that doesn't match up, ma'am. All right. That's not what I'm going to do. So this is what guys have to figure out. Are you going to pedestalize a 49er and do what she says to get a piece of 49er piece leave? Or are you going to actually say, forget it, pull back, build your life up so that you can go after the sevens, eights and nines a little bit easier? Okay, I came up with 49ers because of the in California. They're mm. the they were the gold diggers. They were the gold. I can guys. see that. I so can I see mean, that. Yeah, the 40. Yes, I can see that. There's one other one, too, which is a a hobosexual. Oh, the hobosexual. Yes, yes. The so hobosexual. That's a guy or a girl who doesn't have a house. All right. She's at the end of her lease or he doesn't have his life together. And he's basically going to be homeless where he has to shack up with a, a busted Pillsbury biscuit can in order to make it. Now, what happens is with hobosexuals, these people tend to take on more red flags than a Chinese parade. They'll go live with a woman and this woman don't, she got a 530 credit score. All right. She's overweight by 60 pounds. She's overaged by 10 years. All right. She's got another kid. All right. Ex-husband living in the next bedroom. I mean, disastrous. All right. But because he doesn't have his life together, or she doesn't have her life together, she's at the end of her rope, she'll start batting her eyes at you. Oh, Tony, ah, acting like she's lovey-dovey. But meanwhile, her, her lease ends in three months, and she knows she can't get another apartment. So this is what happens. They, they use the laws of attraction to find residency. Gotcha. So let's, that'll, that'll kind of segue into men dating younger, younger than them. Okay. Would you Agree with that? I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's natural. What is a, let's say a guy's 35 years old. Yeah. What, what is a good age for him? Um, nothing over 28. Okay. Nothing over 28 because in this market, in the available women, you have to think this woman is, has, uh, you know, a 28 year old woman, potentially, if you want to take her seriously, right? I mean, if you just want to sleep with a woman, sleep with whoever you want. All right. But a 28-year-old woman by this particular point has been to college, all right? Most of them go to college. They fornicated their way through the freshman dorm and the sophomore dorm. They got their off-campus apartment and went through the fraternity guys, football players, and whoever else was popular on campus. By the time she got out of school, she did whatever she needed to do. And now she's looking at, she's at the end of her rope. She's looking at maybe a couple of good years left living her sex in the city dream. Now, 
she's going to toss herself at you and say she still has worth and value. If she's over 28, approaching 32, uh, that's going to be a dangerous point because her intentions are not to be a loving wife. Her intentions are to be father time. All right. To punch that baby out. And then eventually uh, what I call them, the praying mantis, she's going to get the baby after you have. And then she's going to bite your head off through the family court. Now, below that, below 28, you still have the ability. If your life is together as a 35 year old man, you have the ability to mold her a little bit the way you need her to. You can teach her what your expectations are. A woman after 28, you can't teach her. You can't teach her. All right. This woman is who she is and she ain't she's never going to change. So why waste your time? Why complain? And how come you don't do this? And how come win this? And no, just go ahead and just give up. All right. Move into a younger model. Now, if you just want to sleep around, I will tell you, honestly, women between the age of 38 and 48 going to give you the best sex. Mm -hmm. They're going to succeed you till you're dry. They're going to do monkey double backflips on you like crazy. All right. But you're following 50, 100 different men. Now, take take it or leave it. Uh, I, I prefer, honestly, to get somebody who's in that 24, 23, 24, 25 year old range. OK, you can get them and, you know, tell them what you want, your expectations. She looks at you as a person of value, maybe a mentor, maybe for money, whatever it is. But at least you can tell her what you like. And she more likely will be willing to do it. Now, do you think that um, when it comes to dating, do you think men and women are different when it comes to age? When what do you mean? When are they different? Well, how do I put this? Um, let's say, um, does a does a man's version of dating change? compared to a woman's version of dating, say at 40 years old? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, as a guy past the age of 40, uh, typically women are, they've had their fun. They've been to girls' nights out, Vegas, Miami. They got plowed through. They messed with a couple of professional athletes and musicians. All right. They've done that. They've, they've lived the best possible life that they can possibly live. Now, a guy in his 40s has not even done that yet. We haven't even reached that potential because everything that we have to get, we actually have to earn. To get backstage patches, passes, we got to buy backstage passes. For a woman before 30, 40, she can get backstage passes. So what happens is she's on her downslope. We're on our upslope. We're on our climb up. All right. We're finally ascending to heights. Our money's getting better. We've been invested in our business or our job. Uh, we've got promoted. So everything's changing for us because we've actually finally earned our place. Now, this woman is like plowing downhill. She's declining by the minute. So her expectations on the date are to find somebody that would be willing to ride that decline out. And we're at 40 going, what the hell are you going to give me? Right. I'm going my way up. Why am I going to take myself off the market for you? This is the trouble of dating in a similar age range once you get in that 40 position. Okay. Because literally, as a 40 year old man, my expectations are, you know, I'm less patient with women. Um, I, I've learned that women could be dangerous. They could bite your head off. They could take you to court. Uh, most men in their 40s, they've already been through some traumatic experiences that cost them either their job, their career, their children. There's a whole bunch of things that men have lost by 40. So he's going into it a little bit more tiptoe, like hold the hold up. And I actually at, in my 40s, I got better chance with a woman in her late 20s than I do making a relationship out of a woman in her in her mid to early 40s. All right. To me, it makes no sense. Other than sexually. Now, you do private coaching, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you tailor your coaching, say, with a 50 year old guy and a 25 year old guy. How is that tailored? I mean, it's crazy. That? So just this week I had a guy in his fifties and then today I had a call with a guy in at age 30. And it's funny. The issues that you're dealing with are normally uh, different because a 30 year old guy, he doesn't have the finances. His life is really unstable. Okay. 
he's dealing with issues that the 50 year old guy's not even dealing with. A 50 year old guy's typically dealing with, oh, you know, I, I, I uh, got with this single mother and we, you know, I thought I could make it work. She's 42, two kids. Uh, I, I moved her in and then she went ape, right? Or she, she's not giving me sex anymore. Uh, some of those things tend to happen to those type of guys, 50. And what they're trying to work out is getting out of the programming of what I call beta male programming. They're trying to get out of that programming and realizing what I'm selling to them, which is your life is going to be good for the next 15 years. Any woman that you bring in similar age, she ain't getting no better by the minute. She getting worse by the minute, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm counseling 50 year old guys, 30 year old guys. I'm saying, man, you better take two years, figure out what you want to do with your life before you roll the dice on a woman. Cause a lot of 30 year old guys, believe it or not, they're dating older women. They're dating older women and older women are going down to date them because they'll more likely get a relationship out of a younger guy than an older guy. But what I find with these younger guys is that they're being dated by older women, older or uglier women that um, these younger guys don't have their life together. Right. They typically are homosexuals. This woman succeeding them and flooding them with sex and then reels them in. Now they're stuck. They're stuck with a depreciating asset. They're stuck with somebody who's got major issues and they're trying to figure out what they need to do to get over that hurdle to get through enjoying life. That's typically what happened. And, and, guys, and guys this age, they waste years. They waste valuable years on no somebody with very little worth. But wouldn't you say then a lot of it really basically is the sex that they're getting? This, it's the, that's the only reason there. Guy, I had a guy. What other reason is there? This guy had a woman with so many red flags, I could not believe it. And he knew it. He sat down. We made a list. Give me the pros. Give me the cons. Okay. The, the cons were outrageous. I would have been running. But I'm also not a 30-year-old guy getting consistent sex. See, a 30-year-old guy getting consistent sex is not many guys are doing that. Despite the fact that guys are running around here. Oh, yeah, I'm getting. Stop the bullshit. Not a lot of guys are getting consistent sex at that age. Okay. And if he's getting that, that's that's changing his judgment. And the the idea that he can leave that and make a better life, he he can't see it. Now, are you saying a 30, 30 year old guy in this day and age? Because I think it was different when I was. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was I think 30 year old guys in our generation were probably married. Mm -hmm. Probably half of them were married by then. Uh, today's 30 year old guy, that's not the case. The vast majority of them made not having started thinking, I mean, started their marriage yet. I mean, I got married at 28. So that means, I mean, I was starting my engagement process at 26, mm -hmm. right? Meeting the woman. By the time I got married, I was 20s. I mean, it was 26 to 28. Most guys at 26 aren't thinking about marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're not having that. So the idea that they're getting consistent sex, I mean, like, daily sex. The woman's there. You might be able to hit some broads on Tinder and all that stuff, but not many guys are got in-house peace leave. I think that messes with your, your brain. Mm -hmm. It messes with your judgment because you're going, damn, I'm going to not get my dick wet if I leave this woman. Despite the fact that she's a walking red flag. Yeah, I think me and you are on the kind of like the same timeline with marriage. <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I hit that same timeline you did. Yeah. I want to ask you about marriage. What is a good marriage? According to Coach Greg Adams. This could be interesting here because, you know, I think it's a good marriage is different for everyone. Um, I think a lot of good marriages aren't available, but I think. Uh, because of the dynamics, you're going to have to have working woman. I mean, I don't know if you can't, you're not going to be able to get around that unless you have your own business. But interesting question here. What's a good marriage? I think the, the loyalty has to be there. Not only short term, this is where I, this is where it gets. It has to be present long term. Okay. And a lot of people don't get this. So People can give me and show me good examples of good marriages. They're in their second year. They're in their fifth year. But it's not till you get to year eight, year 12, year 15, and year 20 
whether you can judge if that marriage is good or not. And we most marriages don't even make it to year nine. OK, statistically of the divorces, 73 percent of marriages are in up in flames by year eight. So a good marriage to me is a long lasting marriage that has all the markings of what both people intended from start to finish. Most people change dynamically in that time, and it is that change that makes the marriage implode. Right. One person changes or I mean, uh, or both changes. That's when you have all hell breaks loose. And then somebody says, well, I said I would do that, but now I'm not going to do that anymore. OK, well, now that's a whole different ball game. How are you going to make that work out? Well, you got to compromise. Who, who compromises the most? Does the person that says they're changing their 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 rules, do they get their way? Well, now you have a whole different dynamic. Well, by law, I can't leave that woman. If I do, she gets money. Now, that means she can change her mind in the middle of the marriage and I have to go along with it. Well, I tell guys, run for the hills if she does that, because if you let it go once, she's going to do it again and again and again. And now you really don't have what they call a good marriage. Let's get into um, dating and dating with race. Do you is are interracial relationships? Do you think they work out most of the time or don't? I think it depends on where you are. I think because I think you're in the South. I mean, they don't consider Florida the South, but it's the South. Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's the South. Yeah. But um, I think it depends on where you are, because a lot of times people think of interracial relationships and they automatically go black and white. But. I live in a place, Southern California is so mixed in the hodgepodge. You could talk about a, a person who is Persian and Mexican, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of times those interracial relationships don't get highlighted. It's always the black and the white ones that we talk about. It's never the, you know, the Asian and the Persian or the Asian. So those relationships seem to be doing well. They don't have the problems that the black and white relationships have. And because of our history, we tend to focus on black and white relationships. But to me, in my mind, I don't care about interracial relationships or not. I think the idea of a person finding a good woman, choosing her because of her race, and you think it's going to be a better situation, I think that's a flawed plan. Okay. I think that's, that's, that's not how you go into relationships picking. Now, if you say I have a preference for sexually, then that's different. Right. You prefer somebody's attitude or something like that. But to say and dismiss a group of people over here, I won't date them because they're this skin color. All right. No matter what you're doing, if, even if you're a white guy and you say, I don't date white girls because. All right. Then I say, well, that's kind of a sweeping generalization. Mm -hmm. OK, on my channel, I tend to talk about women and I reflect it generally. And I go in and I say this reflects all women because we're all mostly American women. Mm -hmm. that we're dealing with. I think the mentality of the American woman is dangerous no matter what skin color she's in. That's just my opinion. So you do you think there's a difference between a white woman or a black woman? Is there there's, difference? there's differences? Yes, there's differences. However, um this is how I would say it. Black women tend to be upfront. Uh the first couple of interactions with her are going to be very abrasive. OK, it's going to be tough. It's going to feel like a power struggle until there's somebody that asserts the dominance and the submissive. There's always got to be a dominant and submissive. There's no equal relationship. Somebody's got to assume the position. Whoever assumes the position first is the winner. So black women tend to want to find out where that dominant submissive line is early. White women typically are going to allow you an opportunity to be dominant until you prove otherwise. So I, I say white women are like the mullet. All right. Up front, it looks good. But on the back end is where you pay with white women. All right. All right. When it comes to the family law court and her having white girl tears and crying and taking you to court and calling the police. All right. They take the cake. All right. They take the cake when it comes to that. So, um, you know, it, you got to pick your poison. All right. White women can do be as just as vicious in the courts and with the police and they can win. 
what was that white woman that shot the uh, neighbor? She was a cop. All right. And I think in Atlanta or somewhere, she went up there and <laughs> it's over. When you get white women crying, guys, I don't care what race you are, and you're in trouble. And the white women knows how to do that. They are very manipulative because they've been trained that way. They've been told that they were Rapunzel. All right. And a princess. And you got average looking white women thinking that they're a freaking princess. All right. You're just like, like a Paul. So I tell guys, depending on who your race of women that you're dealing with, just know where your BS is going to come in. Black women, your BS is going to come in from the beginning, right? All into the middle. And if you can survive it, it's going to be an easy ride all the way to the end with white women. Yo, she going to treat you like she going to rub your feet and suck your toes and do all kind of stuff right up at the front. All right. And make it all easy entry, a hunky dory. All right. Eight years later, eight years to year 50 going to be hell. All right. So that's just what that's what you gonna have to deal with. Know what you're going to deal with. Um, let, let's go back to some Manosphere stuff. Yeah. Now, most of most, if not all guy's entry, I call it an entry fee to the manosphere, is yeah. usually through some sort of trauma. That's the reason why a lot of guys search for content, maybe come across you, other content creators. How do you deal with a guy that's like going through a breakup or a divorce that is is really hurting, okay? Yeah. Now, some guys are different. I'm the kind of guy, my brother's the kind of guy, we were raised like that. We can take a shot to the chest. Yeah. We can take that punch. How do you deal with a guy that can't take that punch? They're going to be in trouble. Okay. Cause in our society, men for so long, we couldn't voice these issues, right? This is the, so this is why the message is so popular now because men can pop on here and find a guy and say, he's describing exactly what happened to me. And this is the first time in almost history since, I mean, in, in recent American history that men can do that and share these stories. And we have to survive being called names, gay, hurt, bitter in order to keep doing this to benefit other men. So now men can turn to us and call me as another man and say, man, coach, I, I can't make it. This woman buckled my knees. She's out here subpoena and everything. What do I do? This is the first time in the last 80 years that men could do this. So that's the benefit. Before, men just had to suck it up. We couldn't even go to our simp friends and talk about this. Remember all your friends and you talk about, man, oh, man, she crippling me. They all oh, just don't worry about it. Her, his wife will come in. Oh, don't worry. You'll find another one. Just go on out there and try on again. All right. And then guess what? Mm. You get set up again. And then that one when buckles you right after the previous one buckles you because you're weak. So the good thing is I'm, I'm happy to be one of the men that other men can come in here and at least laugh through the pain. When I went through my divorce, it was the most painful thing that I'd ever been in. And I've never, you know, I've, I've been healthy, thank goodness. But, and, you know, I've lost jobs and had to move cross country several times. The divorce process I will not wish on my enemy. Okay. And this is why I caution men before you get married into this system, you have to know what happens to 70% of the men who don't make it. Because when you don't make it, you're going to go through what I would say is equivalent to three deaths in your immediate family. Okay. It's going to be painful. And, uh, got, so again, that's just why I'm happy to be here. Guys, when you go through this stuff, this is why it's important you vet these women out. And, and it's important why you build value in yourself first before you marry these women. If you come in with no value and then she pulls the okie doke on you and now you're over there bent over, you know, sitting in a studio apartment, if you're lucky, while she's got your house, she's got custody of your kids, she costs you $100,000 in divorce uh, lawyer fees and you don't know what to do next. And she called your boss and told you how much of a horrible husband is. And he laid you off. These things happen. So now that we're talking about it, more men can come in. And now I make it funny. So, you know, uh, just so when you come into my show, I can make you laugh about some of these painful things that we go through. 
that that is an easier entry fee humoring somebody making yes. them laugh taking that that bit of pain that they might have yes. now a lot of you know single mothers are huge and it's been a we'll call that a uh, pandemic for <laughs> who knows how long would you would you equate a lot of these this weakness to guys that were raised by single moms absolutely and the more men that are going to be raised by single mothers the worse it's going to get because the single mother ultimately wants you to be what all the men in her life weren't. And she's going to train you to be that guy. And ultimately, you will be what I call the son husband to your own mother. So she's going to get out of you what she could not get out of an, any other man. So as you turn 16 and you start getting your, your balls drop and you're getting your muscles and you're able to pick up stuff and carry and mow lawns and all of these things. She's going to lean on you and say, you're the man of the house now. And now you have to assume the position that I could never get any other man to do. And this is how you treat a girl. This is what you do. She's going to tell you everything to not get you the same piece of pussy that she gave to every other man out there. So now I try to tell young men that even if you were born from a single parent household, these are the red flags. This is what she set you up to do. And ultimately, now you're the son husband. Not only do you have to worry about the women that you have to enter in relationships now and be the man that she needs to be, you have to be a man to your mother because she didn't get remarried. She don't have a man. Think about all the men that now have to think about their own mom as she ages because she was such a feminist. She was so strong and independent. She never remarried. Now you got to care for her and you got to try to make relationships work today. It's a recipe for disaster for these young men. So I, this is what I highlight for them. Okay. And you know what? This is a kind of a great segue into a, a question I like to ask, which is since you're a, you're a big part of the Manosphere, I mean, you are. And the Manosphere is, for people that don't know, is a collection of thoughts and philosophies, whether it be dating, lifestyle, but this question to me is, is important to ask a content creator like yourself. How has the Manosphere failed men? Mm. How has the Manosphere failed men? Um, it, it could be that I think the issue that the Manosphere has is that we're YouTube content creators, right? At the end of the day, we're content creators. So we have to find a way to make this give this message which is unpopular it's unpopular even on this platform and we have to give it in a way that is beneficial to us right as a content creator so how do we do that well we have to monetize it because i'm putting my neck out here on the line talking like this i can't go get a job i can't i can't apply hey my name is greg adams dude they they google my name it's over so how do i do it well, I have to monetize it. Well, here's the problem with men. Men don't invest in these things, right? Not a lot of men do. They want this information for free. And I always tell men, well, your counterpart, women, they're going to seminars. They're buying books. They're paying these. They're out investing our rival, our rival's message. They bought the love language, what, the five love languages, 100 million times over. My book hasn't sold near that. So here's the, here's the problem that we have. The minute we cross the line and try to be a monetizable commodity, well, then either the message gets weaker or men look at it as he's that guy's trying to capitalize on his fame here on YouTube. Well, the minute you do that, now you're going to rub people the wrong way. Okay? They're going to just call you a salesman and a PUA artist and all of this stuff. So ultimately, ultimately, those people either they either fail or people leave their platform or they leave their message. So ultimately, I think that's what ends up failing the manosphere at all. And also rivalries. I think rivalries is a bad deal. OK, um, you know, as men, we're competitive. So a lot of times we want to see us do better than the next guy. Some guys are here for drama because they're single raised men and they don't realize we're here not to entertain them all the time. We're here to provide them messages. Uh, so 
uh, when people think their territory is being threatened or their monetization is being threatened or they feel like they can make a name off of themselves by mentioning another, another person's name, well, then that can hurt and fail men too because there's guys that watch you and they watch me. Now, if they consider both of us men of high esteem and then I attack you, Tony, what did I do to that man? I just made that man have to pick sides mm -hmm. and I don't think that's fair. And I mean, it's it, realistically, it's it's a it's a group of philosophies. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 your background, your life, and you're sharing that with the world. You're yeah. sharing your experiences and the best information that you can give to a guy that is probably going through hell right now. And hopefully, they're not. You know, not everybody is, but I know and you know that there are a lot of guys that are going through rough times, it's especially now through the holidays. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you're a guy, just think about it. I, and this is what happens uh, when people, cause we're a little tribal here. There's, there's tribes here within the man's yeah, right. right? So what tends to happen in these tribes is the tribes believe that they have the best solution for all men. Well, if you're a pickup artist per se, or your philosophy leans towards that, Go, go get another woman, go try, go, go fuck every woman you see. Okay. Well, how does that help a divorce guy? How does that help a guy just getting reamed in family court and getting bent over and screwed by the bailiff, the judge and the court magistrate? How does that help that guy? Well, there should be another tribe for that guy. And there is another tribe for that guy. But then the PUA comes and attacks that tribe mm -hmm. and says everybody in that tribe is weak and they're this and that. Well, no, the tribe over here is going through a different trauma that maybe in five years, they'll go over to you and they'll say, okay, I'm good now. Cause this tribe helped me. Now I want to fuck every woman I see. And then we push them over to you. But instead we get this attack syndrome and say, Oh, why did you go with them? And you went over there. You see what I mean? Every man doesn't need like a, a, a guy that just needs, he's never been through a divorce. He just want to know how to pick up chicks. Well, let's push him over to this guy. I'm not going to diss him. I'm just going to say, oh, you just want to pick up women. Go over there. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's another guy going, His he can't even, he's paying child support for kids that he hasn't seen in three years. Does he need to know how to pick up chicks? He doesn't. He needs this tribe over here. And then we need to correct him, build him back up. And then make him the man he needs to be. So if we can get from attacking each other and learning and understanding that men are in pain when they come here, we can focus on the message and then build a better man together as opposed to try to fracture off and, and claim who's better within this. I always say this. People on the outside don't see us as any different. So they will all link us all together. So don't think your shit don't stink because you think you got a better philosophy. Everybody is linked together in here. Yeah. I mean, my personal attitude toward content creators and th there's a reason why I've gravitated to your content too. Not only did I have the pleasure of seeing you speak live, which to me was a home run at 21. It you worked know. out. It was good. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was just an incredible speaker and a great message, you know, yeah. but to me that I, I, I gravitate toward, someone that has an end goal. And I think a lot of content creators don't give you an end goal at right. the end of that. You know, That's they're true. kind of leading you on. And That's there's true. nothing, nothing, nothing at the end. In other words, follow me, do what I say, but there is no ending. And to me, an ending is a healthy, healthy, confident man yes. that has to get together 100%. That should be the end goal of everyone whether yep. you're PUA. So I, you know, I see that you do always push an end goal for men, yep. you know, and, and I'm proud of you for that because I think that's really, really important. Yep. You know? And there's times that guys will come to my channel. They follow me for two years and some might say, well, we're still talking about this. And I say, yes, because you might be in what I call the transition phase where you either become a contributor, you make your own channel or you just go ahead and leave. Well, there's other guys coming in every day at level one. Okay. They, 
you know, this message, they wanted to evolve so fast. Okay, now we got it now. Women are this. Let's go to the next level. Nope. There's a guy over there talking about the next level. But here we're taking guys that are in stage one and stage two. And that's what we do here. All right. It's like a car wash. Car washes don't wash clean cars. All right. There's always a dirty car. Every time that damn wash runs, all right? So we got to run this wash like a car wash. Yeah, we can't make it a fucking auto detailer now that I washed your car, all right? We got to stay on focus on our message. Come in here, these guys are hurt. These guys are going through some issues that they want answers to. So every day, we got to clean, or we got to rebuild a new man. Yeah, and I, and I, I call it the pile-on effect a lot of times in the chat. A guy will ask a sincere question, and then it's like simp. You know, oh, you're yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you're that, you're this, you're that. Well, you might want to think back, buddy, because you exactly. were that guy two years ago or exactly. a year ago. You know? and that that's true. I mean, I see that going on sometimes in live chats, and and I'm kind of like, man, I mean, just give the guy a chance. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't know what a 304 is. All right, give him a break. He hasn't watched me a, but for a few weeks. So give them a break. Let them let them try to figure this out. We all were simps. When mm-hmm. I came in, I was watching Tom Likas and Sandman. All right. And I was learning about they were talking about hypergamy and female nature. Never heard of it before. Right. I'd never heard female nature. What? So until I was able to digest the message over time, then it made sense. Then you can see it out in the field. So we got to make sure we give all men time. Uh, to be the you know reform themselves from simp symptom. Yeah. yeah, I mean you know hey I'm guilty right now because I took a guess at what a 49 or what <laughs> exactly right yeah it takes time to figure that out yeah so I want to do something with you in this quick segment I want to call this segment and I want to really kind of put Coach Greg on the hot seat all right and uh, I'd like to call this segment but Coach Greg so it's a question. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You can answer them. You can use that sound effect board <laughs> and whatever you need to do. But I'm going to I'm going to ask a series of questions and just shoot away, man. Just, uh, All right. you know, give me the 100 percent coach Greg here. I'll do my best. All right. First question is, but coach Greg, she said she's only been with two guys. All right. Let me tell you something. All right. Anytime a woman opens her mouth, she's lying. All right. And the reason why is this is a protect protection strategy. She's been with more guys. All right. The two guys that she's mentioning are the two she's been in long term relations with. All right. Everybody else were just hookups, casual flings, and they are not in the mathematical equation. But Coach Greg, she's only forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt. Oh, my God. you have to understand is a woman will say that she doesn't want you to pay her debt, but it is her intention to, you know, have her, have you unintentionally raise her marketplace value by doing something stupid like that. Guys never pay off any of her debt. Don't even get involved in their politics. If they build a bad home, let them die in it. But coach Greg, she's only five years older than me. You're going to start the circus guys. We're in circus territory now. All right. Once she strips off that makeup, guys, all right, you're going to see 10 years older. You might see 15 years older by the particular time. Guys, let me tell you something. Five years older is a a significant advantage in terms of women. They've had an advantage over you that you haven't had. So she's seen a world that you haven't even seen yet. I don't advise you to date seriously older women. Just use the mess practice. But Coach Greg, she only has two kids. Oh, my gosh. Okay, the the time of uh, bailing out single mothers has ended. Yes, they're practiced too, uh, but the reality is those kids will never, they will always be the priority in that relationship and you will be required to do things that you won't even be able to do for your own damn children. Oh, your children got to go to Disneyland, but my children didn't. Guess what? All right, guess what? Your children ain't my children. All right, here, listen. A woman that is extricated the uh, the father out of the children's life is basically one of the biggest red flags that you can see. Avoid. But Coach Greg, she's only been married twice before. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. You get a buzzer for that one, too. 
Um, women that are married twice, statistically, they have an 83% chance of divorcing a third time. Why? Because they pulled the trigger. The first time it was not so easy. The second time it was much easier. Uh, divorcees, to me, unfortunately, when you pile divorcees and single mother together, you get 70% of the American population. Then if you compile fat women in there, now you got damn near 95% of American women. The reality is divorcees, twice divorce, should be off limits. It's a red flag. But Coach Greg, she only goes to girls' night out once a week. All right. Nope. I'll give you a nope on that one. Um, girls' nights out is something that you should not accept. All right. And listen to the word accept. And you let her know that I don't accept it. Now, don't say allow. You can't go. Now you're controlling and insecure. And now she's got you by the balls. Just say uh, any woman that is going to go to girls' nights out and rub on, uh, allow guys to uh, buy them drinks and set up opportunities to have dates with Chaz and Tyrone's. Any woman that needs that, I'm not going to accept that as a legitimate relationship. Therefore, I don't need you as a girlfriend. So when you come back, you don't have a boyfriend now or you don't have a husband, et cetera, et cetera. Go have fun. But Coach Greg, she only cheated on me once, I think. Oh my gosh. And what else? I think. I think. <laughs> All right. Do I have a sound? Oh, I do have a sound effect for that. I am a nasty woman. Yeah, she's a nasty woman. All right. Guess what? Guess what? If you only caught her one time cheating. All right. She's cheating, cheated a dozen more times after that. You just didn't catch her. And guys, women that cheat is different than when men cheat. I think honestly, men need more women than they actually can. Monogamy just doesn't work for men. Uh, they actually have to become less of a man to be monogamous. But when women cheat, the intentions are to destroy the relationship that they're in. They cannot cheat and take dick from two different men. It just doesn't work that way. Okay. We got a couple more. But Coach Greg, she was in an abusive relationship before. Oh, gosh. All right. Here we go. Let me tell you something. Uh, I feel for people, people that have been in abusive relationships. But if you look at the statistics, Men and women abuse each other just about equally. It's almost neck and neck. And if you actually threw emotional abuse on top, women abuse men way more than men physically abuse women. It's just one look that is uh, worse than the other. But here's the deal. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I don't harbor abuse women. So if you've just been a part of an abuse relationship, I feel sorry for you. And especially I feel sorry that you continue to be with that man and let him plow your back down for eight years and you stayed in an abusive relationship. But now you want to make home with me and use me as your therapist. Mm. Absolutely not. Abuse women. You're not welcome into this domain and domicile. Nope. <laughs> at all if that's your if you're gonna lead off with that excuse to get sympathy points with me all right i'm gonna point you to the nearest therapist and move on to the next woman but coach greg we're in an open relationship oh my gosh nope guys um open relationships don't work for men all right if you're married to a woman and you're in an open relationship you're gonna get jealous real fast because the amount of baloney ponies that she can guzzle and swallow compared to the amount of women that you can get She's going to top you off. I mean, easily she's going to, and then it's going to turn into a competition. So you can't get, uh, just imagine men can't go out to a woman without a woman around. I mean, without her, his woman around and tell that woman I'm in an open relationship and she go, Oh, okay, that's fine. Like she'll never go for that. The new woman will never go for that, but a woman can walk outside and go, I'm in an open relationship. My husband doesn't care. And that guy will follow her home. So don't do it. But Coach Greg, where do I find a good woman? Okay. Do I have a noise for that one? Here we go. What happened? Where did all the men go? A good woman. All right. I will start off. Start off at the junior college. Go to freshman orientation or your sophomore graduation. All right. If you're looking to find a good woman after the age of 28, 35, these people have ulterior motives. And that is to beat father time, beat the biological clock, find a husband so they don't have the next 40 years living with cats and eating cat food. They have ulterior motives once they get older and they're less trainable, they're less malleable and moldable. Go for younger women if you want to try. But if she's in a sorority or she went to Arizona State, somewhere where they got a football team or a basketball team and she still got friends there, oh, my best friend was the power forward on the basketball team. Mm. 
-hmm. guess what? All right. You following after that. All right. That woman probably been ran through more times in the Holland Tunnel. You know, you got to be really creative on how you do this. Just don't date older women and watch these younger women, too. They're really apex predators, as I call them. Now, the last one is not going to have the butt beginning in there. And this is the one that I'm sure you hear a lot is Coach Greg. You helped me change my life. And now I see the truth. That one's, uh, you know, I don't have a winning button on here, but that one's, the, you know, the applause button on this one. Right. I, listen, I hear it. And, um, you know, it means a lot for a man to reach out and say things like that because men aren't emotional or sensitive. So for a man to feel like he needs to reach out to another guy and say, you change your life, that is a big deal. Um, and I appreciate, you know, having that ability to do so. And I, and I think you're doing that. I really do. <clears throat> I see that, you know, men are gravitating towards your content and your message. And that tells me you're doing something that's helping other men. And in this society, in this world we live in right now, as men, sometimes we need that help. Yes. And I'm glad that so many guys can reach out to you. And I think you're doing an incredible job with your content and your coach gang, as they call, I guess. Coach gang. Coach coach gang. gang. Yeah, yeah, the coach gang. Yes. Awesome. Right here. That's the group, man. But look, I, I, I mean, I'm happy to be able to be one of these voices out here because to be honest with you, there were men before me that were voices for me. I mean, gosh, I mean, I can't. The names of people that actually helped me get to this point uh, were the men that stuck their neck out there and were the message for me to continue to. So I'm happy to be that. Mm -hmm. And what I think you're doing, too, and this is my personal opinion, but you're making it about the man, not about the woman. Exactly. Is a is a great message to pass to every man. Yep. So, but uh, go on, man. Coach, I appreciate your time. Um, I just want to let everybody know my name's Tony Bruno. Um, I'm having a great time here with Coach Greg Adams. You can find my channel at Tony Bruno T21 Surfer. You can find me on all social media at T21 Surfer. Also, I have some great dating coach lifestyle podcast on my channel with the likes of Alpha Male Strategies, Steve the Dean Williams, Coach EO, Pat Stedman, Alan Roger Curry, Dr. Sean Smith, Zach Small and Texas Dom and a few others. So I'd appreciate to subscribe to my channel and come and check me out. Check them out. So how can everybody find you? Because I think it's very important that we get your message out. And so give everybody all your platforms. Absolutely, man. I'm here on YouTube, Coach Greg Adams, the main channel, but I got six channels here. So uh, you might find me on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel, the Ask Coach Greg Adams channel, where I answer questions. Um, but if you look up Coach Greg Adams, put it all as one word, Instagram will come up, Twitter will come up, Facebook will come up. I've oversaturated the market on social media. So um, if people have a hard time following, finding me, it's amazing because women find me all the time. Right. <laughs> they seem to be able to find me and send me nasty messages all the time. So. Well, I hope that this message today with me and you will touch a few guys and and, you know, kind of, you know, we made it fun. And yeah. I think that's important. I think that's a great aspect of of what you do is making somebody that might be hurting or somebody that is going through a tough time. Yep. You make it fun for them. You make it make it easier for them to understand. You know, so gotta do that. It's, it needs to be that way. So, in, in the words of my good buddy Ivan Throne, much love, honor, and respect to you, sir. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you for having me. And I appreciate your time. We'll talk again. Thank you.